Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the Apache and we're looking at a very useful MPD page known as the Performance or Perf page. First, let me set the scenario. Let's say we're in a jet, an F-16. We could load that F-16 up to the gunnels with loads of bombs and loads of weight and still fly up to 40, maybe 50,000 feet without any real threat of damaging that aircraft. The only problem we might have is on landing, bursting a tire maybe, but otherwise it's very robust. But helicopters are very different. They're much more sensitive to high weight loads and or flying at high altitudes. It's much more possible to damage and even crash the aircraft if you're flying heavily loaded and or at high altitudes. And so what we have is a screen that allows us to predict in which weight and altitude threshold we can safely fly. And that's the performance page. So let's just zoom in on one of our MPDs. If we go to main menu, perf page. What this does is look at a given altitude, a given free air temperature, that's the ambient temperature outside, and weight of our aircraft, and make predictions about how we can fly the aircraft safely in terms of hovering torques, in terms of cruise torques and fuel flow, in terms of maximum gross weight, in terms of speeds and max torques. Regards these three important parameters, we can either have them set in a current format, which is what we're actually doing or achieving now, an absolute maximum prediction, and our planned prediction. So if I were in current, which I am now, then the pressure altitude we're flying at is taken from the aircraft system automatically, 290 feet barometric. The free air temperature is as the aircraft is sensing outside. And another note to say is that fixed wing aircraft are obviously affected by ambient temperature, but helicopters even more so. Free air temperature is very important. And gross weight here, that is what our aircraft is actually achieving at the moment. If we wanted to look at maximums, then we will click here, maximum. It zeroes them all out and we have to go and input them manually. So let's go and do that. Gross weight of the aircraft uh, over to our keyboard unit. Let's say it's 20,000 pounds. Pip. Uh, free air temperature outside. We're going somewhere where it's very cold. So one degree. And pressure altitude. We're going high. Uh, 5,000 feet. And these five prediction boxes have now been recalculated for this data. As well as max, we can also have plan, which basically does the same thing, but it's an additional set of details, and we can set that up again if we like. So for the rest of the video, we'll stick on current. First, our predicted hover torque. How much torque does it require to hover the aircraft in certain scenarios? Torque is a rotational force exerted by the engine output shafts on the transmission of the aircraft. It's very important we don't exceed too high a figure. So the minimum torque required to achieve a hover in ground effect, that means hovering very close to the ground where our aircraft benefits from a cushion of air below it known as ground effect. In the ground effect, we'll need to maintain 63% torque. Bearing in mind the current parameters and all five boxes are bearing in mind these three parameters here. Next, the required torque to maintain a hover out of ground effect to above ground effect at current parameters of 78%. Next, go no go. The required torque to maintain a hover at our maximum gross weight, which incidentally is going to be 21.7 thousand pounds. It will require 100% torque to hover in ground effect. This one here is the only one I don't actually understand, so I'm going to read it directly from the manual and maybe you can make more sense of it. It says go no go OGE displays the predicted hover torque required to hover in ground effect at five feet over the surface at the maximum allowable ground weight specified for dual engine out of ground effect OGE hovering flight based on air density. If you can make sense of that, please let me know. And finally, we have our indicated torque. This is what we're actually achieving at the moment in the aircraft. And we can prove that by putting our eyepiece back on there, 40%. Next, cruise minimum torque and predicted total fuel flow to achieve constant level flight 
at a certain speed. That certain speed can either be range, the speed required to achieve the maximum range, or end, endurance, the speed required to give the maximum flight time, which will always be less than range. Out of interest, the max range speed will be 118 knots, and the max endurance speed will be 71 knots. So at 118 knots in these parameters here, we'll need to maintain 64% torque and a predicted average fuel flow of 993 pounds per hour. At 71 knots, 41% torque and a fuel flow of 776 pounds per hour. Next, our maximum gross weight, the absolute maximum of the aircraft in ground effect and out of ground effect obviously you can be heavier in ground effect with both engines running or with only one engine running so in ground effect both engines 21.7 thousand pounds out of ground effect 18.7 thousand pounds with one engine 14.1 thousand pounds and out of ground effect 12.2 thousand pounds next our true air speeds true air speed is the main measurement of speed in the apache VNE, known to all aircraft, is velocity never exceed. If you go faster than that, you will break your aircraft and crash. 191 knots in this situation here. Next, VSSE, the minimum velocity based on current parameters that you can fly at on one engine. You can see that our current weight here is above what we require to hover so if we go below 27 knots at any point in one engine we will stall the rotors and crash we've already talked about these guys here the speed we need to achieve for our maximum range and here our maximum endurance the wind outside currently calm here is the maximum momentary torque we can apply through the engines with dual engines or both engines 126 and with a single engine, 130. Now, don't be fooled. It doesn't mean we can maintain those torque levels for a long time. We will break our aircraft if we do that. But momentarily, for a few seconds, we can achieve those figures. If you want to know more about how long you can over exceed certain engine values, please uh, watch the engine video that I did on the engine page. Next, predicted center of gravity forward here that means 201 inches from the nose of the aircraft and aft is 207 inches from the front of the aircraft our center of gravity should be somewhere between those two figures our current predicted center of gravity is there at 204.7 inches uh, the hit sub page here is not modeled but the weight page is let's click on that this allows us to program in some basic weights of our aircraft and luckily we don't have to worry about this. It will be done by the ground crew and it is automatically populated in DCS. But just in case you wanted to change it, you have the aircraft basic weight here, including fluids, I believe. The left aft bay here, which is where you keep your golf clubs, I'm pretty sure. Your survival kit here we've got 30 pounds of survival kit or whatever the heck that is the current weight including gear of the pilot and the cpg 235 pounds i think he needs to go on a diet the weight of dummy missiles so non-dummy missiles and weapons i believe will be automatically calculated into the weight of the aircraft but for some reason the dummies are not so you can add them there and just to show you you can change the weight by clicking on it going to the keyboard unit, putting in the right weight, enter, and that will adjust your aircraft. So, back out from weight page, and that is the performance page. I hope that was useful, and bye-bye.